Good morning slash evening slash afternoon. Whenever you are watching and hearing this, I'm your boy, the HOD of the BSB, and welcome to episode 81 of the Pitchside Podcast, where you can listen on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other platform. Follow us on social media and Matsad PSP on Twitter, Pitch Side Pod on Instagram. And of course, like, share, comment on the YouTube version, and subscribe to the YouTube channel and enable notifications to receive all the possible updates from this channel. You're absolutely welcome. It's Friday, so of course we're going to be previewing with the weekend action from Europe's top leagues, but not before talking about the Europa League quickly, going through what happened on Thursday. Of course, on Wednesday, Tottenham played Wolfsburg, so they were the first qualifiers to the uh, qualifying team to the round of 16 of that competition. Then, of course, joined by um, Ajax, who defeated Lille to one uh, again, improving their victory from the first leg with the uh, same scoreline. Arsenal in a dramatic encounter, um, avoiding the fate um, that ha- that was uh, that happened to them last season against Olympiacos in the same round with defeating Benfica three two. Of course, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang opened the scoring for them. Then Diogo Gonçalves, one of the hardest prospects in Europe, equalised. Then, of course, um, the goal was disallowed for Aubameyang early on in the second half before uh, before. Um, Benfica added a second goal by Rafa Silva in the 61st minute. Guarantini managed to score the second goal for Arsenal before Aubameyang by an assist of Bukayo Saka, one of the really most excited youngsters in the world at the moment, um, scored the third goal in the 87th minute, avoiding a horrific fate for Arsenal once again in this competition. Obviously, this is a competition that Arsenal care about, they want to win, because it seems that Probably would be their only way towards the Champions League. And in a surprise, really, I didn't expect, certainly. After ending 3-3 in the first leg, Mulder managed to go to Hoffenheim and beat Hoffenheim 2-0. Of course, the goals, uh, Erlen Anderson in the 20th minute and uh, the 95th minute uh, scoring two goals for Mulder and giving them the play. Napoli, after losing a course in the first leg against Granada, turning things around to defeat them 2-1, but unfortunately that wasn't enough to give them the qualifying, um, you know, uh, the qualifying card. Granada, of course, taking advantage of that 2-0 when the away goal was very, very uh, crucial for them. Uh, Zelinski opened the scoring pretty early, and it looked like Granada, of course, uh, are going to be in big, big trouble before Montoro equalised in the 25th minute, and they really held on quite well. Fabian Ruiz added the second goal in the 59th minute, and it looked like Napoli, for all intents and purposes, are going to be adding more goals, but they couldn't, um, quite frankly, in the second half. They tried as they might, but Granada had a terrific defensive display, and they closed down things pretty well. In another dramatic um, game in the second leg of this dramatic uh, tie, Rangers defeated Antwerp 5-2. It was a crazy old game, really. It ended 4-3, of course, on the first leg. Morelos opened the scoring for Rangers, then uh, Antwerp equalised in the half-an-hour mark before, um, you know, Rangers adding two goals quick fashion in the uh, second half, 3-1 before. Uh, you know, Antwerp adding a second goal, making it really, really difficult. It could have gone either way, but of course, two late goals in the last 10 minutes for Rangers, making it 5 to a very authoritative qualification for the round of 16. Shakhtar Donetsk defeating Maccabi Tel Aviv 1 0. Villarreal turning things around, uh, not turning things around really, uh, defeating Salzburg 2 uh, 1, of course, adding to the first leg result uh, in um, in uh, uh, in Austria. Uh, Berisha, of course, scored the first goal for Salzburg. It looked like they might turn things around, but they didn't. Gerard Moreno managed to equalize, and then, of course, late on, he scored the second goal from the penalty spot. AC Milan avoided also a very horrific fate. Um, AC Milan drawing one all the, um, of course, taking advantage of the fact that they drew two all in uh, Serbia. Frank Kessier from the penalty spot before El Fardu scoring from the twenty fourth minute uh, to equalise for Red Star Belgrade. It was it was a pretty scary game. 
for AC Milan, uh, particularly in the second half, where you know Red Star Belgrade had a bit more guile about them, but they couldn't just finish the job. Um, AC Milan managed to get through, and again, this is another side that they care about the competition, and really this competition is important for them as much as they, you know, still are in the league contention, of course, in Italy, and they could still have a Champions League spot uh, through the league system. Uh, AC Roma defeat Bronga. 3-1, of course, they doubled their victory from the first, like, 2-0 in Portugal. Three goals for Roma coming from Edin Dzeko in the 24th minute. Then, of course, uh, after Lorenzo Pellegrini missed a penalty, Chris um, Carlos Perez scores in the 75th minute. Borja Meral adds a goal in the 91st minute and makes it... Uh, three, uh, one for Braga. Of course, the goal from Braga coming in late on, and it was an own goal actually by uh, Brian Cristante by Leverkusen. Lose to young boys home and away, and the guard of the competition. It, I mean, a mini shark for me, considering that. They are a decent side this season, and I expected it better from them. Um, you know, this is a game that Milo Vakuzin, of course, dominated because they are the ones running behind the scoreline. Young boys played a well-defensive game and then bounced on them to score the couple of goals to win. Uh, Dynamo Kiev managed to defeat Club Brugge away from home 1-0. Um, of course, uh, taking advantage of the home draw 1-1. Uh, then, of course, we have Dinamo Zagreb defeating Krasnodar, qualifying to the uh, the next round. Dinamo Zagreb, of course, defeated them 3-2 uh, away from home in Russia. And then, of course, I think in the biggest shocker in this uh, in this competition, Leicester City losing against Slavia Prague at home 2-0. We said, I think, before and on yesterday's episode that this is a game that could go either way because of the lot of injuries that... Um, that uh, Leicester City have in their squad, and you know, despite that, they still played a decent game, they still showed up really well. But Slavia Prague were absolutely ruthless uh, when they had a couple of chances. Of course, they had only three shots on goal for the entire game, and they scored two goals from them uh, Provod in the 49th minute and Sima in the 79th minute from an assist from Ola Inka, scoring the second goal. Slavia Prague managed to eliminate, in my opinion, what was one of the favourites really in this competition because Leicester were doing quite well until the uh, until this round. Man United uh, managed to qualify, of course. They defeated Tosidad 4-0 already in the first leg, so a goalless draw wouldn't do them any harm uh, in the second leg. And PSV Eindhoven managed to defeat Olympiakos Paras to qualify to the next round. The draw is going to be taking place. On Ferrari Day, we'll see what matches and what ties we're going to be getting in the round of 16. Let's turn on to our proper preview now for the week. And I'm going to be starting from Spain. I usually start from either the Bundesliga or the Premier League. But I'll change the scenery now. I'll start from Spain. And of course, I think um, if you saw the thumbnail, they saw the image, saw the title, I think. This is going to be focused on Barcelona and Spain mostly, but not before uh, going through. It's going to be happening in round 25 of La Liga. As we mentioned, uh, Levente uh, faces Athletic Bilbao today, of course. Uh, Eibar host Huesca on Saturday. Sevilla Barcelona uh, on Saturday as well. Uh, Alaves Osasuna, Hetafi Valencia, Celta Vigo Valladolid, Cadiz Betis. Uh, Granada, Elche, that was those two matches, or those three last matches on Sunday, and Villarreal Atletico Madrid, as well as Real Madrid host Sociedad on Monday. So, the focus is on Barcelona, I think in this one, the, I think the biggest axis of this, uh, of this round is Barcelona. Um, they face Sevilla twice in the next week. So, they're going to face them now, and they're going to face them at the camp now again, uh, for the second leg of the uh, Copa del Rey semi-final. And the last trip to Sevilla for Barcelona wasn't exactly, um, you know, happy. it didn't exactly end in a happy way for them. 2-0 loss in the first leg of the Copa semi-final. Um, I really, I think I, 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 I tried to look for a, an appropriate title for this episode. I tried to, when I, when I chose to focus on Barcelona, I tried to look for an appropriate title, for a title that would grab attention. I think the knockout blow for Boston is quite an appropriate one, because looking at the nature of this game, looking at how Boston are going into it, I, I really don't give a, I don't, I don't give any 
and he hoots that Boston defeated Elche because that scoreline doesn't you know doesn't make a difference. You're beating Elche anyway. So this is going to be another different test to Barcelona. This is going to be another big game for them where you expect them to not be as good as you want them to be. And Barcelona this season, I think Messi have been their saviour for quite a while. Um, and, you know, the try... I mean, being third on the table for them is quite the achievement, considering the problems that they have, considering the long saga with Messi in the summer, considering the financial problems, the fact that Koeman doesn't really... Uh, didn't really wrap his head around the team yet, for some reason. Uh, despite, I mean, despite the fact that we thought... Okay, he 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 found a way. He found a lineup. He found a formation. He found a shape to play with. But then he comes in such matches. Hello, the match against PSG in the Champions League, and then he tinkers with the lineup and decides to play the likes of Piquet as starters um, for for some reason. Really, um, it it doesn't really make sense. Um, it it's certainly not the kind of deal. Um, that Boston fans want from Koeman. They certainly want him to be more stable, to be more, you know, um, fixed in terms of his uh, of his lineup. He, he, they need they need from him some stability, and they didn't get that stability from Koeman for most of this season. And Barcelona are going to be looking now for a way out of this of this sort of hole that they put themselves into. This could be the end of their season. Figuratively, metaphorically speaking, this could be the end of their season. These two games against Sevilla could be the end of the season for Barcelona. It could be the deciders, I think, for how things are going to be going going forward. There's, of course, the election um, coming in March, the uh, the presidential election coming in March, which is a big factor, I think, of what is going to be uh, transpiring in Barcelona for the next couple of years, obviously. Is it going to affect Messi staying at the club? Is it going to affect Koeman staying at the club? Because I think if a new um, candidate is going to be coming in, one of the things I think they're going to be doing probably would be get rid of Koeman. And I know that might be unexpected, but I think they will do it. Because the guy is not going to be bringing them anything home this season. He won't be bringing the league, certainly out of the Champions League. And he's now teetering around being out of the cup. So I don't think that it will be enough, you know, done from Barcelona's board to keep faith in him. I think he's going to be out, and Barcelona need to try and look for for a uh, for a new coach. Coming to the game against Sevilla now, this is a game. I mean, Barcelona. You expect them to play in a certain way. You expect Sevilla to not have possession. You expect Sevilla to not dominate the game because. Barcelona are the ones, I think, running behind the result, most importantly. They want to close the gap on Real Madrid and Atletico before the rest of the fixture, because they play before those two teams. They play, Atletico Madrid play on Sunday, on Sunday, and Real Madrid play on Monday, as you mentioned. And Barcelona want to close the, down the gap to three points, to maybe you know, to two points behind Atletico, overleap Real Madrid even momentarily, and try and look for a way out um, in, in this match. A draw might suit them really well. It might help them. They don't want to lose more ground in Atletico Madrid, but certainly they'll be looking for a victory. They will try and maybe you know play their possession game, try and play the style that they want to. Sevilla, we know Sevilla, they're a decent defence. They're really good defence. And the midfield is really working tirelessly and compared that, that to Barcelona's midfield, which likely is going to be starting with Busquets in there. It doesn't look very likely that. Barcelona are going to be sort of dominating the tempo of the game. They're going to be have possession, that's probably sure, but they're not going to be having the hard work, they're not going to be having the determination, probably, that Sevilla's midfield having. Um, overall, my expectations for this one are, 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 is not big for Barcelona. I really see them losing, and... Um, I think I see them losing both the here and then the cup tie, and you know, as doom and gloom and as grim as it sounds, it is realistically uh, possible. Uh, of course, as we mentioned, of course, the standings heading into this fixture: Atletico Madrid, 55 points, 52 for Real Madrid, 50 for Barcelona, Sevilla, 48, 41 for Sociedad, 37 for Villarreal, 36 for Betis, 31 for Levante. 
30 for Granada, 29 for Athletic Bilbao, Celta Vigo as well, 29, 27 for Valencia, Osasuna, 25, Cadiz, 25, 24 for Hetafe, 22 for Alaves, 21 for Eibar, Valladolid, Elche, 21 points, and Huesca with 19 points. It's pretty tight as well at the bottom of the table. From Spain, we move on to the Bundesliga, of course, round 23 of action starts uh, on Friday, Werder Bremen. Host Eintracht Frankfurt on Saturday. It will be Wolfsburg versus Hertha Berlin, Stuttgart versus Schalke, Bayern Munich versus Köln, uh, Borussia Dortmund versus Arminia Bielefeld, and RB Leipzig versus Borussia Mönchengladbach. Union Berlin Hoffenheim on Sunday, Mainz Augsburg as well, and by Leverkusen versus uh, Freiburg. Um, Bayern Munich coming into this fixture against Köln, of course, on the back of an important victory against Lazio, 4-1. It was a great performance and a great victory. Um, the fact that they defeated them 4-1 away from home makes it even better and also the fact that with the depleted squad that they have at the moment and they still have a lot of injuries coming into this game by Munich, it, it doesn't really it doesn't really look that good. Um, they're gonna be getting the likes of uh, they're gonna be getting the likes of Thomas Muller potentially back for this one um, if he tested negative for COVID nineteen and is available for training. Of course, he uh, he's not gonna be he's not gonna be you know uh, in in problem and that is gonna be an important return. I think the fact you get someone like Thomas Muller back is one of the most important players in the in the squad and and really is a player that Bayern Munich would need to have before the business end of the Champions League, before the quarterfinal, the semi-final, the big games, if Bayern Munich want to keep the Champions League title for themselves for another uh, season. Um, Köln, of course, are not going to be losing anything. The first In the first game they played against Bayern, they barely lost uh, 2-1, and, you know, they had a terrific game back then. Uh, Bayern Munich, you know, were coming, I think, um, straight off the bat of a, um, you know, of a run in the Champions League that was amazing back in the uh, back in the tail end, I think, of September it was the game between the first game between them in uh, in in Cologne, of course. It was two one for Bayern. It was quite the hard victory for uh, for Bayern, of course. Thomas Müller was the scorer back then from the penalty spot, and Serge Gnabry added the second goal. Um, Köln really gave Bayern a hard a hard time in that one, and probably they would do again if they take advantage of the high line, which seems that every team would want to take advantage of um, this season for Bayern Munich. Um, I I certainly see Bayern, of course, winning in this one because they needed it. I mean the the grip is is getting a little bit loose on the Bundesliga top because Leipzig are two points behind them and they will obviously be waiting for a slip for Bayern at the Allianz Arena in order to take advantage and probably take their place at the top of the table. Speaking of those, they face München Gladbach on Saturday as well. This is a big game for them, and you know. After a, after a week or so of turmoil in the Champions League, after losing to Liverpool, then of course defeating, I mean, um, Hertha Berlin 3-0 in a really decent game, um, I think they would need another victory. And against the Munching Land Max side that it just came about from quite the quite the comprehensive loss against Man City. Really, it was 2-0, but should have been more, quite frankly. Um, the The... They will try and litigate the damage here. Borussia Mönchengladbach, I said it in the Champions League preview, and I'll say it again, they will not get to the Champions League next season. It looks most likely that they won't even get to Europe overall because their situation is really, really grim. Uh, Borussia Dortmund looking like they're catching up quite quickly, and it's getting out of hands for Marco Rosa, uh, um, who probably will have a better future. At, uh, uh, who, who probably will have a better time at Dortmund in, in getting into the Champions League. Um, Leipzig, certainly, this game is important if they want to keep chasing Bayern Munich, if they keep the difference, keep the difference to two points, or even more, uh, or even reducing the difference even more, if Cologne managed to make Bayern drop points if with a draw or a loss, which is not impossible, but again, I think very unlikely for Bayern to drop points. Uh, against Köln and Leipzig, of course, play Borussia Mönchengladbach on Saturday. Dortmund as well, play Arminia Bielefeld on Saturday. And, of course, coming on to the back of a couple of victories in the Champions League and in the league that are really, really important. Borussia Dortmund would walk into this game as absolute favourites to smash Bielefeld again, 
Erling Haaland is on fire and certainly would want to score more. He would want to add to his tally in the Bundesliga and want to drive the Borussia Dortmund forward towards a Champions League spot because the eyes are on him if Borussia Dortmund do not make it to Europe next season. Um, Bayern Munich are top of the table, of course, 49 points heading into this fixture. 47 for Leipzig, 42 for both Wolfsburg and Frankfurt, 37 for Leverkusen, 36 for Dortmund, uh, 33 for Union Berlin and München Gladbach, 31 for Freiburg, 29 for Stuttgart at 10th, Hoffenheim 26, Werder Bremen 23, as well as uh, Augsburg, Köln 28 at 14th, 15 is Hertha Berlin with 18 points, 18 for Armenia Bellefeld, 17 for Mainz and 9 for Schalke at the bottom of the table of the Bundesliga. We'll finish off with the Serie A. We're leaving the Premier League for the Saturday edition of the podcast to give it, you know, its full um, length exposure there. Uh, and the round 24 of Serie A action kicks off uh, on Saturday with Spezia facing Parma, Bologna facing Lazio, fresh off their loss against Bayern in the Champions League 4 1, and Verona facing Juventus. Uh, on Sunday, it will be Sampdoria, Atalanta, Crotone, Cagliari, Udinese, Fiorentina, Inter face Genoa, Napoli face Benevento, and of course, the big game to Europa League uh, encounters um, Ice Roma facing AC uh, Milan. Um, I think the, the all eyes is going to be on AC Milan versus uh, on AC on Ice Roma versus AC Milan because this is a game that is going to be defining the rest of the season, not just in terms of the uh, of the table, uh, but in terms of the European uh, places as uh, as well, AC Milan, of course, straight of the loss in the derby, and then um, certainly the qualification in the Europa League might give them new hope um, in uh, in in life. Um, after that, they will try and bounce back against Ice Roma. Aside that, again, fresh off the qualification in the Europa League, as we mentioned earlier, against Braga, and they would want to get themselves into the Champions League conversation. Um, alongside uh, Juve and AC Milan and Inter, they would want to be back at that competition uh, as as well. Um, AC Milan, of course, are going to be uh, you know are going to be probably um, you know trying to trying to avoid. I mean, I don't know, trying to avoid defeat at the moment. I mean, they're not exactly at their best. I think they're far from their uh, than their best form from early on in the season, where they were undefeated and they were, you know, pretty much winning every game they have. Um, Ace Milan now are, are different, um, you know, to the side that we saw early on in the season. The side that we all thought, okay, they will be fine and they will be competing for the for the Serie A title of the season. And mathematically, they still are, but. The fact is, the derby loss changed a lot of things. Four points now behind Inter Milan. And Inter Milan, I think, they're going to be trying to make their grip tight on top of the table for Ice Roma. It's not exactly, you know, it's it's exactly, I think, the perfect moment if they want to face a side like Milan. A side, again, coming from some hardships as of late. But also, there is a lot of injuries for Ice Roma, so that might not help. Uh, they're missing the likes of Cristante, Ibanez, Gumbula, Santon, Chris Smalling, uh, for Zaniola for uh, injuries, you know, all pl- a lot of players that have questions over their um, fitness um, heading into this one. AC Milan, of course, with the, you know, uh, still lacking uh, Benassar and Menzukic, as well as Brahim Diaz, whose uh, fitness is in question for this game. I think it's all about... AC Milan bouncing back, but certainly no disrespect for Ice Room. This is going to be a big game for them if they want to get closer into that title scene and also uh, keep their Champions League spot uh, intact. Inter, of course, as we mentioned, face Genoa, try to you know improve their lead at the top of the table. Juventus try and keep themselves um, you know and in the company of that. Uh, top table conversation when they uh, face Genoa uh, or they face Verona away um, from uh, from home. Um, this, I think, this is a, a defining moment in the Serie A. I, it will be. The Serie A title race, as I mentioned a lot of times on this podcast, pretty much would be you know condensed in two teams at a certain point, and it looks like at the moment it will be Inter versus AC Milan, and Inter might just you know escape. Uh, as well from the uh, from the other clubs, 
It, it really looks like that. It looks like Inter might escape away from other clubs if they defeat Genoa and Juventus drop points or AC Milan drop points. Um, um, you know, the likes of Atalanta and Lazio and Napoli, of course, interested in the Champions League battle. Uh, there, Atalanta seems to be the closest to that battle and they need a victory away from home against um, against Sampdoria. Lazio, they would need a win as well against uh, Bologna away from home. All trick encounters for those top six in this Serie A. Napoli as well coming from the uh, elimination in the Europa League facing Benevento. This is a game that you know should be normally easy, but it wasn't. The first leg of it wasn't easy. Uh, they, I think they defeated them uh, 2-1, roughly defeated them 2-1 away from home after going 1-0 down uh, in, in that game for uh, Napoli. So heading into this fixture, of course, um, Inter Milan with 33 points, 49 for Ace Milan, 40 44-45 for Juventus, 44 for Ice Roma, 43 for Atalanta, 43 for Lazio, 40 for Napoli, 35 for Sassuolo, 35 for Verona, 34 for Verona, 30 for Sampdoria, 26 for Genoa, Bologna, 25, as well as Udinese, Fiorentina and Benevento, 24 for Spezia, 20 for Torino at 17th, and the three at the bottom are Cagliari with 15 points, Parma with 14, and Crotone with 12 points. That's it from me for this episode. I was your boy, the HD of the BSB. Like, share, comment on the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and enable notifications to receive all the updates from these podcast episodes and all other content on the channel. And until next time, follow us on social media. I'm at SatPSP on Twitter, Pitch World on Instagram, and you can listen to this on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other platform. And until next time, I'll see you soon. Goodbye.